Hi, my name is Shadeda Ojat. I'm Ghanaian and Nigerian, and I'm a student heading into grade 12. This is how I usually introduce myself, but that's not all of my identity, not even close. My name is also Rahinatu, meaning the mercy of God or a blessing in Arabic. You see, when I look in the mirror, I see a lot of things. I see a black girl, I see the daughter of my parents, and I also see my insecurities. But most of all, I see the things that I'm proud of. My nationality, my ethnicity, and most importantly, my faith. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. I'm a Muslim. From a very young age, I knew that being a Muslim meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But the more I knew about the religion, the more I loved it. I was always such a curious kid, but learning about the prophets and the struggles that they overcame became my favorite thing. I learned to find peace and forgive others in order to free myself. As a Muslim who doesn't wear a hijab, which is a religious head covering, I never thought I'd see the real life effects of Islamophobia. This was until 2017. It was the month of Ramadan and there had been a terror attack in London, England a few days prior. I was on my way to school when I crossed paths with an elderly lady. I smiled at her nodding and she returned it with a glare. What she said next is something I'll never forget. It's you people. You're the problem. Always slaughtering others for your God. She spat in my direction. I knew she couldn't hurt me, so I ignored her and continued walking to school. But right before I entered the building, I unwrapped my headscarf and tied it back so it no longer resembled a hijab. That Friday in 2017 was the last day that I ever tried to wear a hijab to school. It wasn't until years later that I realized every time I wrapped a hijab to leave the house, I thought of that lady. You see, being a teenager is hard. Being a teenage girl is even harder. Now, when you add black and Muslim on top of it all, it's terrifying. Walking down the road becomes a task. Worrying about what everyone will think or say if I'm to mess up is a constant worry. Every time the headlines read, terrorist attack, my heart would clench for the victims. But then I'd think about all the Muslims in the world that would now pay the price. The world isn't a fair place, but I had already known that. Yet suddenly all the inequalities became glaringly clear. Why weren't Muslims given a day off to celebrate Eid? Why did they have to request off of work or even ask to be excused from school to celebrate such an important holiday? Why did the entire Muslim population get blamed for such tragic events like 9-11? I did a deep dive and became obsessed with detail. I listened to interviews and came to understand the pain of the victims' families in these terror attacks. And yet still, I couldn't understand how people automatically equated Islam with terrorism. How could they not see there was more to us? How could they not see that we were a peaceful people that lived among them? Finally, I came to my conclusion. There is no way to justify this, because hate crimes of any kind were wrong, whether it was against blacks. Asians, Palestinians, or against Muslims, or anyone else. They were not justifiable. As a society, we've become so accustomed to always trying to find the root cause or the justification for violence, but it's as simple as this. There is no justification. All hate crimes are fundamentally wrong and unjust. They are rooted in hatred and break down functioning societies. No one should be made to feel like they are less than because of any aspect of their life. You may think this doesn't affect you, and perhaps you are privileged enough to never experience a hate crime. But any society that tries to justify hate crimes or pretends they don't exist will ultimately stop functioning. Mahatma Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Well, clearly we've gone blind. How can we not see that we are inching towards a society of complete separation? If we are not able to find peace and unity soon, our children will be raised in a world of war and destruction, much like the one that we are heading towards now. We must teach ourselves and the future generations to broaden their minds and views. Involving more cultures and religions into the school curriculum, along with celebrating more holidays nationally, will help prevent children growing up filled with hatred and ignorance. On the evening of July 6, 2021, five members of a family were waiting to cross the road in London, Ontario. They were struck by a pickup truck. Four members of the family were killed.
The incident was reported to be a hate crime, which was indeed premeditated. Whether mental health was an aspect or not, this could have been avoided. Whatever hatred caused this man to go out and kill this Muslim family could have been avoided. Now a nine-year-old is left to mourn his family with the rest of Canada. For over 20 years now, Islam has been wrongly portrayed in movies, news, and media. Why would we be shocked by a generation that grows up filled with hatred against the religion? Did we think there would be no consequences? And what happens when the next hate crime occurs? Will we act so shocked once again? What are we willing to do to stop this cycle of hate? In 2020, we saw millions come out to protest so many different types of hate crimes, and still, we see little to no change. When will we realize that we need unity and we need it now? We no longer have time for slow and gradual change. There is so much wrong with the world, ranging from poverty to global warming, and even some forms of modern day slavery that continues to be inflicted against the Uyghur people in China. But the first step to making the world a better place is allowing ourselves to love and accept others. I once told my teacher that I would change the world and make a million dollars a day doing it. I now know the second part is impossible, but the first part isn't, especially not now, because almost anything makes a difference. No action is too small, whether it's posting on Instagram to spread awareness or starting a petition or maybe even having an open and honest conversation with someone. For now, I'd like to ask something of everyone who sees this. Go on Google, TikTok, Facebook, or even Twitter. Learn about some injustice that's going on in the world right now. See what can be done, and educate yourself with reliable sources. Then, tell someone, a friend, a parent, or a sibling, because that's really all it takes. That's how a movement starts. Thank you for listening.